So we'll go ahead and get started. <clears throat> Our next topic is Lean Security, a framework for activities and design factors in DevSecOps presented by Dennis Fersleggers. Uh, Dennis has almost 30, excuse me, 20 years in the information technology and security field. And he's acquired a wide perspective on the challenges related to building things and building them securely. His interests range from governance to code and anything in between. And he couldn't be happier living in an age where we can think of things such as infrastructure as code, security as code, and even policy as code. Dennis currently performs research on DevSecOps and helps customers on their path toward rapid, reliable, and secure software engineering. Dennis, welcome. Please take it away. Thanks for the very nice uh, introduction. Uh, good evening, um, I'm Dennis. For the people who joined the stream uh, from the beginning, I have to apologize because apparently I already accidentally contributed to this user day by making some background noise in my kitchen. My sincere apologies. Um, I currently work for Orange Cyber Defense uh, Belgium, where I help them to shape uh, the service offering in the field of application security. Uh, I spent the last two years uh, researching on, on DevSecOps and I'm uh, honored to be invited here uh, this evening to share the results uh, with you. Um, obviously 25 minutes is a very uh, limited period of, of time, so time is precious. So I suggest I um, jump into the presentation. Uh, first stop maybe why uh, did I uh, start this uh, endeavor two years ago? Firstly, uh, because it, in my experience, uh, but uh, this is certainly kicking in an open door, uh, security is often treated as an afterthought or at least very late in the process as already mentioned by previous uh, speakers. Um, I strongly believe that, that approaches uh, to develop complex systems are best based on iterations over small units of work. Um, so that's why I'm drawn to the topic of DevOps or DevSecOps or whatever other term you want to use for it. And so my starting uh, point uh, was, uh, okay, uh, DevSecOps, there's a lot of information related to it, but which security activities are relevant and, and how do we approach them in potentially a, a different way? Um, every uh, research needs a problem statement. So I also uh, uh, produced uh, mine. Um, there are a couple of negative drivers, a couple of positive drivers. I'll, I'll go very shortly over them. Um, first is, is the statement that traditional security uh, doesn't work very well uh, in DevOps uh, environments, um, obviously because they create deterring delays, uh, which um, uh, uh, creates problems with short iterations and may inflate development budgets. Um, if you look at reports uh, being published, you also see that in many cases, security is seen as an obstacle uh, for DevOps adoption. Um, but there are also some positive uh, drivers. Uh, one of them is that doing DevOps enables you to do security well. Uh, and on the other hand, that automation has the capability to improve security. And these broad drivers led to the statement that integrating security assurance in, in DevOps without increasing delay uh, would be a potentially beneficial uh, objective. Uh, very shortly uh, on the research approach, uh, the objective of the research was to consolidate the current state in DevSecOps by bringing together the views of academia and of practitioners. Um, in short, uh, there were a couple of research questions defined. So firstly, I wanted to find a definition uh, for DevOps and, and DevSecOps. Um, I wanted to identify which activities and design factors were relevant to DevSecOps. Um, and then the question popped up if we know which activities are relevant, how do they rank then in terms of effectiveness and delay? Um, so the approach to, to get to these answers first was uh, diving into academic literature. 
um, where I, I found a, a set of, of scientific papers published over the last five years, um, and then applying thematic analysis to it so that I could extract security activities and um, design factors. Uh, then to bring in the practitioner view, we did a survey with um, international DevSec ex uh, experts. Um, in total, we found 10 uh, DevSec experts to be willing to, to contribute, uh, which, uh, which actually demanded uh, considerable time uh, from their part. And with some of them, I also had the chance to do uh, in-depth um, interviews. And based on this, we came to a consensus uh, on two definitions, what is DevOps and what is DevSecOps. And we also managed to identify uh, 33 security activities and 87 design factors, which by this group of experts and academic literature were uh, perceived as relevant in the context of, of security for DevOps. And then in, in the next step, uh, we did a group support session. Basically, we brought again eight uh, different uh, international uh, DevSec experts together. Um, and we did a prioritization session uh, together with them. And so the end result is, of this is, is the 33 activities, uh, but then ranked in terms of their effectiveness, their delay, and their financial consequences. Um, I'll shortly give an overview of, of the research uh, outcomes um, without going into detail, because obviously the time uh, to do that is, is not available. Uh, but so this is basically an overview, one different view on, on these security activities, um, broadly categorized depending on, on the time, uh, the process steps for which they are um, relevant. Um, you see, or I see a lot of, of overlap with uh, topics which were already discussed and, and introduced uh, during these sessions and also for which uh, OWASP specific uh, guidance is available. Um, but so this is, is the outcome basically of, of the activities. And for each of these activities, um, you will find how many uh, of the DevSecOps experts uh, perceived it as being relevant. Um, and then also their ranking in terms of effectiveness, delay, and financial consequence. And if you would like to do further analysis, you will uh, find their, um, the range, the IQR range, uh, which um, uh, identifies how much agreement or disagreement there was between the, the experts. Um, the security activities mainly express the what you can do in DevSecOps to improve security uh, maturity. And um, the second aspect, which I mentioned, are design factors. And basically, design factors answer the question, how do we do these things differently in, in DevSecOps? And so uh, for each of the identified activities, you will find in, in the research paper an overview of specific design factors where uh, either the experts or academic literature indicated that they were highly uh, relevant and they should be taken into account. Um, so how can you, can you use uh, the outcome of, of the research? Um, there are different ways of approaching it. Um, but in, in essence, what it gives you is a toolbox of the what, which is the activities, and the how, which is the design factors uh, for DevSecOps. Um, in, the first, uh, in the first stage, you could use it to tailor, based on the characteristics of the target uh, process you are aiming for, uh, based on effectiveness, delay, and financial consequence. It always reminds me of, of the old running joke that you can have uh, quality, you can have it on time and on budget, but you can only choose two. And in a way, uh, that is also what, uh, what was reflected in, in the research, obviously. Then you can use this um, to construct a model of, of the target DevSecOps um, uh, process, which would be most uh, suitable to your organization and objectives. Uh, you can perform an assessment against this target uh, model to identify your current uh, state and uh, potentially this can lead to 
uh, DevSecOps uh, roadmap, implementation roadmap, uh, and, and so on. Um, so this is how you can use the framework, but there is a very important, uh, a couple of important takeaways which I, I want to give, and they have already been expressed in on various occasions throughout um, the sessions today. Um, and in essence is that you can perform all the activities which are in the framework and doing all of them would potentially not be a very wise uh, decision. Uh, but the key point is to establish a security engineering mindset. And this is something which was mentioned over and over again uh, by the different experts I managed to interact with. So you can do each and every one of these activities. Um, but it would lead to um, either uh, additional administration, unused outcomes, um, and so on. Uh, so this is this is really uh, important. Um, and then, if if you want to, uh, if I have to summarize uh, what most of the experts indicated is that um, at the end of my research, I can I can uh, with a fair certainty say that DevSecOps is is not so much about doing different things as it is about doing them differently. Um, and if you are uh, wondering what differently means, um, the three ways of DevOps for uh, many among you, probably uh, a familiar concept uh, are, are actually key. And if you try to apply these to each of the activities, it already brings you a, a long way ahead. Uh, so the first principle flow, uh, so trying to work on small batches of, of work, uh, bringing it fast from idea to customer or from development to operations, uh, depending on how you want to put it, then creating very short feedback loops so that the people involved um, get a quick feedback on what works, what doesn't work, uh, how well they are doing and then making room for continuous uh, experimentation and, and learning. And I think that is some of the things we've seen throughout uh, the presentations uh, today, uh, which you also read in many publications around agile security uh, uh, and DevSecOps. And I think it's key to, to take this and try and apply it to every activity you do um, in, in the process. Um, so then if I have to summarize some of them, I would say that the, the really one of the first things to achieve the security mindset is to share security uh, learning experiences uh, to create this mindset. Um, security often is, is hidden um, uh, away from, from people and, and that's not a good thing. So if um, you learn things, for instance, during the operations phase of, of an application or an environment, you should bring that back to your uh, development team um, to make sure that they can learn um, from it. Um, obviously, you need to shift left, but that's an, an interesting uh, concept because in, in many cases, what people do is shifting the activities to the left when, when we talk about this concept. And it's actually in many cases also about shifting the responsibility for those um, uh, activities to, to the left. And with that also comes the authority. So if you expect teams to care about security and to do certain things, you also need to give them the freedom to make meaningful decisions within that, that area. Um, and, and that is often uh, forgotten. Uh, and then obviously you need to find a way to create supporting mechanisms for them to get the job done. They are not security experts. Uh, you cannot make a security expert out of everyone uh, because then you would not have uh, developers and operations people uh, left. Um, so obviously you need to create a, a supporting mechanisms for them to, to get the job done. Um, another aspect which has already been, been mentioned here today is a leverage security automation capabilities wherever you can. Um, that's an important point because it allows you to uh, relieve some of the pressure on your security team and it's also part of, of these tools to get the job done. Um, so that's an important takeaway. And then um, try to measure uh, security in meaningful ways not to blame, but really to give people insights and create learning opportunities. So it should not be about uh, a competition or, or that sort of things. It should be about giving people the chance to see 
how what they did improves or doesn't improve the, the end result. Um, and then overall, uh, but this is a broad topic in itself, so, so I will uh, just uh, leave it with, with the overall statement. But um, if you have to make a choice, um, you would favor reducing delay over any of the other aspects uh, from the principle that um, DevOps and as a consequence DevSecOps is aimed at creating, establishing business value fast. And so obviously if you reduce delay, you should be able in, in, in most cases to gain more business value than any potential uh, cost or licensing, uh, those sort of things will, will offset you, of course, within limits. But if you have a choice, uh, favor reducing delay over other aspects is, is a takeaway. Um, so these are just some general observations uh, after talking to 18 uh, DevSecOps experts um, and, and reading through academic literature. Um, but obviously, uh, the activities and the design factors is the meat of, of the research and uh, is, is published uh, and available to you. Um, and I also wanted to do something uh, for the OWASP Sun uh, community, obviously with, within the boundaries of my capabilities. And, and I'm, uh, I, I welcome any potential corrections uh, uh, to this. Um, but I prepared um, a mapping between the different OWASP SUM uh, categories and uh, the different activities which I was able to identify. Um, so that basically uh, where SUM gives you um, the why you should do something, the objectives you should try to achieve within that context, and, is, and, and some pointers to what you should do. Um, the the uh, results of my research really try to give you the what and the how you you can do it in in DevSecOps. Um, so uh, this will will also be uh, publicly available, and uh, if anyone is interested, they can use it to map uh, security activities and design factors to the different uh, OWASP some um, uh, categories. So with, with this uh, research uh, being available to you, published, uh, uh, my job is, uh, is done, at least for this, this part uh, of, of the challenge. Um, what are the potential next steps? Um, one of the things I promised to many people along the way, and uh, which I, I owe them, and uh, is also interesting for myself, is to develop some sort of an overview of the DevSecOps tooling landscape. Um, I was very hesitant to do this from the start because in many cases, when we talk about DevSecOps, people immediately land into the tools aspect. And as most people here probably know, it's people over process over tools. So tools should be the last thing and should support the others. Uh, but nevertheless, it's, it's interesting to know if you want to do something, which tools could help you uh, doing it. Um, and then to develop a reference implementation uh, based on the existing set of OWASP tools, because I think there are a lot of tools available already open source, and uh, they can be used to build a, a reference implementation of what such a, a complete cycle would look like. Um, and I also have a colleague of mine who performed very interesting research to identify how to integrate compliance with standards like ISO 27000 and NIST into um, DevSecOps uh, by leveraging automation and different methodologies. And so we are uh, potentially going to combine these two researches uh, into one. Um, that brings me to uh, almost my, my conclusion. And uh, I, I think potentially leaves room for questions, uh, should you have any. Um, obviously, I just introduced the context of the research, the outcomes, but not the details. So if you want, you can find it on, on, on the uh, leansecurity.org webpage. Um, I will also check if there are other ways I can make it available to you. I will also be lecturing on the topic for the people from the Benelux, if you are interested, at the Antwerp Management School. So you are more than welcome uh, to join me there. 
And in any other way, if you want to reach out to me, uh, feel free to, to connect uh, any uh, feedback experiences uh, is, is, is more than, than welcome. Um, and that, that leads me to, to the point where I want to, to thank you for, for having me here, for giving me the opportunity to share this uh, with you. Uh, and I'm, I'm open to any uh, questions you may uh, have. Dennis, we don't have any questions in the queue yet, uh, but I have a question I'd like to pose to you. And I appreciate the topic. I think very often um, when we talk about Agile and DevOps and Lean, um, people do often say, well, it, you know, we're moving too fast for security. We can't do security. And so it's nice to see your arguments supporting the idea that they can be complementary. Actually, they're not mutually exclusive. They can work together to uh, improve the overall experience and improve the security posture of our solutions. So my question is related to metrics. And, uh, and typically what we see when we're trying to collect metrics is uh, organizations or teams or leaders use those metrics in a manner inconsistent with what you described, and that is you were arguing uh, that the metrics should be used in a positive manner. You know, how can I measure what I'm looking at and use that measurement to make improvements? But oftentimes people or organizations use those metrics to measure against others and the, in a negative way, and it ends up being, quite frankly, an apples and oranges type comparison. So do you have any advice based on your research or experience on how to dissuade that negative view of using metrics in that manner? In other words, to just look forward and use it in the positive manner that you described? Uh, that's that's a, a, a topic in itself and a very challenging question. Um, but I think the key lies uh, partially in, in what I also described for any of the activities, which is that you don't uh, just shift the activities to the left, you also shift the authority to the left. And, and in that sense, it should the teams themselves should be able to define which metrics they want to collect and get feedback on so that they can get learning experiences out of it. So too often security metrics are defined by the security team or by the CISO or by compliance officers. And it's actually the teams building the actual software that should be able to define which metrics they want to see and get fed back to them uh, so they can get meaningful learning experiences out of them. So I think part of the answer lies in giving them the authority and the autonomy uh, to choose their own metrics. Thank you, Dennis. Anyone like to submit a last minute question? I'm not seeing anything in the queue. Yes, please go ahead. It's, uh, we still have quite a lot of people attending. So um, if you have any question, please uh, type in your question in the Q&A or raise your hand. I can also allow you um, audio access. I don't seem to be able to uh, raise my hand, I guess, since I'm a panelist. So I don't know if you mind if I just ask my question right now. Please. So I, I know um, from, from experience, Threat modeling seems to be one of the, the hardest things to achieve, right? Especially when you're moving so fast. Do you have any tips, pointers on how to, to try and achieve threat modeling at, at that low of a level? That's, um, I, I, I spent quite some time uh, reading up on, on that and, and reading publications from much smarter people than me on, on this topic. Uh, and I, I think it's, it's indeed a, a very hot uh, topic. Um, I have come across some of the tips which, which many people here have, have uh, probably already crossed, which is uh, you need to make sure that the threat modeling happens in, uh, on a sufficiently small uh, scope. Uh, maybe you shouldn't do it for everything. You should do it based on the security qualification for, for a given feature module or, or activity. So, so that's a, a tip. Um, time boxing it so that you make sure it, it remains uh, short enough, uh, but giving people some pointers to build off of so that they don't need to start from, from scratch. Um, but, but then from there on, it really depends on 
the capabilities of the team, um, how well they are already at threat modeling. Imagine you have a team which is very skilled in it. They will be able to do a good job in a relatively short time. Um, if you don't, then you need to help them and, and give them, again, tools and supporting methodologies. Um, but overall, from a security perspective, we aim to create a threat model which is as complete as possible and which covers the com all components of, of, of a, an application. And that's great if, if you can get there, um, but you should favor doing it and doing it regularly over being complete and, and having full coverage. So I don't think I, I told anything new here. And, and the topic of agile threat modeling is, is, is a, a complex uh, topic in itself. The only thing I can say is that if you skip it, if you don't do it in, in the Agile and in the DevSecOps methodology, the risk that you will introduce design issues in your application is significant. And as we all know, those are the uh, most expensive to fix later on. So uh, it's a challenge, I think, for the broader community. Perfect. Thanks, Thank Dennis. You. Dennis, could you clarify for us uh, when the research uh, is available or will be available? It's it's available now. So at this point in time, you can you can browse to the website. The the full uh, research is published there. Uh, the infographic which you saw in the presentation is available there, and uh, the the mapping with the, the SAM framework is available there as well. Um, if uh, we want to share it in any uh, other way, that is that is also possible. Great, thanks. And uh, we do have one more question in the queue here. As OWASP SAM covers the why and objectives and lean security covers the what and the how, is it safe to assume that OWASP SAM can be leveraged in developing an organization's DevSecOps policy while lean security can be leveraged in developing an organization's DevSecOps processes and procedures. That would be a fair statement. Or I think you can also use OWASP SUM for the latter, with the exception that the SUM framework is, and, and I think rightfully so, intentionally unopinionated, uh, whereas the lean security framework obviously is very opinionated. Uh, it looks at DevSecOps, it looks at it from the perspectives of these three ways. So uh, I would say it gives you a more opinionated guidance on the potential implementation of your activities. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Dennis. Any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you, Dennis. Uh, wonderful presentation. And uh, look you. forward to follow on questions potentially based upon your research.